In the vast expanse of the Indian Ocean, a story of high seas drama and resilience unfolded, a tale that would capture the world's attention and leave us all breathless. But what transpired when these audacious pirates dared to confront the wrong ship in a survival of the fittest scenario? And most importantly, did everyone emerge from the ordeal unscathed, or was the kidnapping of Captain Phillips fatal? On April 8, 2009, something incredible happened on the high seas. Four armed pirates tried to take over the U.S.-flagged container ship, the Maersk, Alabama. But their plan hit a snag when a scuffle broke out with the 23 crew members, and they had to flee, leaving behind a valuable hostage, Captain Richard Phillips. But let's take a step back here. This wasn't just some random pirate attack since the Somali government's collapse in 1991. Sea banditry had become a lucrative trade in the region. Desperate ex-fishermen and ruthless criminals armed themselves to the teeth with guns rockets hijacking trawlers and nimble fiberglass boats known as skiffs. In 2008 alone, these Somali pirates hijacked a staggering 44 major commercial ships, a significant jump from the previous years when there were 12 hijackings. The Maersk Alabama was no ordinary ship. It sailed through dangerous waters, but this time it was different. This ship was American-owned and protected by U.S. laws. Those pirates had no idea what they were getting into. They thought they could do their usual drill and hijack another ship. But who can face up to the superpower force like the U.S. Army? Now, back to that fateful day. Four young pirates, aged 15 to 18, boarded the Maersk, Alabama. When the pirate alarm sounded, Chief Engineer Mike Perry led 14 crew members into a secure room they had prepared for emergencies. The crew fought back, firing flares at the pirates. They were bravely fighting back with all their arms protecting their ship. Outside the secure room, Chief Engineer Mike Perry waited, knife in hand, ready to confront the pirates. He was ready to protect the ship and not bow down to these bullies in the sea. He tackled the pirate leader, Abduwali Muse, in a dark engine room. A tense struggle ensued, but Perry managed to subdue Muse, who sustained an injury in the process. Chief Engineer Mike Perry was a real sharp knife in that dark engine room. Hours later, the crew tried to negotiate with the pirates, offering to exchange Muse for their captain. The plan didn't go as expected. Believing their words, Captain Phillips adhered to them. Captain Phillips escorted the pirates to a lifeboat, intending to show them how to operate it. But the pirates fled in the lifeboat with Phillips as their hostage. The U.S. Navy did not lose any time. They sprang into action, positioning the guided missile destroyer USS Bainbridge near the lifeboat. They were not losing one of them to those pirates. They gathered intelligence from various sources, including drones and the crew's reports. Negotiations between the pirates and the Navy were attempted but deteriorated. On April 12th, President Barack Obama authorized the use of lethal force to rescue Captain Phillips. The Navy's elite SEAL snipers were ready and waiting for their orders. As the lifeboat's engine started and the pirates threatened Phillips, the snipers took their shots eliminating the pirates and saving Phillips. They bit off more than they could chew when those pirates tried to take on the Maersk, Alabama. Captain Phillips was safely rescued, and the Maersk, Alabama continued its journey to Kenya. The surviving pirate, Abduwali Muse, was detained and faced trial in the United States, where he pleaded guilty to several charges. Here a fact, charges of piracy and possession of a machine gun were dropped in exchange for the guilty plea. On the 16th of February 2011, Muse was sentenced to 33 years and 9 months in federal prison. The hijacking of Maersk, Alabama had a profound impact on the shipping industry. It was the turning point in cargo shipping as many cargo ships began employing security details to prevent pirate attacks. The sailors had to take many steps for the protection of their cargo ship and for their crew members as well. This shift in security protocols contributed to a decline in pirate activity off the coast of Somalia. Do you think it was a power struggle between a first world country and a poverty-stricken third world country?